Welcome to the latest show, I suppose, with myself. This episode is going to be a solo Q&A. These are questions that I pull from the likes of social media platforms, such as Facebook, TikTok, and most certainly a combination of YouTube and then the DMs on any of those platforms. So if you ever want a question, shout it out in particular to a topic that you want discussed in at length, because with a post, you can only literally put it in a video or it's a reel or a TikTok or YouTube. This is the area where you get better bang for your buck and your name shout out. If you want, you can also put anonymous, which one of the questions is in this evening's podcast. So we'll touch on the four main areas of this solo Q&A. And those are in relation to how to reduce cravings. Then we go on to foods on a night shift. Then we go on, is nuts a good source of protein? And then the final question we have running up here is, is milk good or bad? And more specifically was asked by actually several different people in the DM this week is, do I drink milk? So those are good. Those are as good questions as any to get started on this week's Q&A. So the first one is how to reduce cravings. This one comes in from Sarah on TikTok. So how to reduce cravings. There are a couple of different areas that people must realize to reduce cravings. It is definitely going to be something that your body is lacking magnesium. Magnesium comes in so many different forms. And the first of which is you're going to get savage bang for your buck if you're going for dark leafy greens. They're low in calories and they're nutrient dense. They also contain vitamin C. They also contain bits of iron. It's non-heme iron for those vegan or vegetarians. It's not that you have to consume all your iron from that food source but they do contain it so magnesium where else can you get magnesium you can also get magnesium from these beans or peas so again these are plant-based sources of protein they don't contain all nine essential amino acids but what they're going to do is reduce cravings because they have the added advantage of okay fiber fiber again keeps you fuller for longer these are one of those things that when you start to add in more whole foods to your diet you literally will thrive. You'll have less cravings. You'll be fuller for longer. You get massive advantages if you're eating those foods I've just listed so far for the magnesium and in relation to your gut health. Gut health is key and it comes from eating real foods. It doesn't come in a pre or probiotic supplement tablet that costs you 100 euros, dollars, pounds, wherever you're based at this moment in time. It's better for you to consume whole foods and it's definitely something i want people to realize is when you consume a supplement a vitamin a tablet a powder form of anything it just it's not the same okay we don't get that same satiation to go hmm i'd love to take this tablet and that's this first uh, process of the digestion salivating of the mouth i typically get it when i think of food but if we are to take a tablet a multivitamin i'm not against those i'm just literally going to tell you that food is medicine food contains every vitamin and mineral that you're ever going to need on this earth especially if it's grown in regenerative agricultural methods which means adding in farm manure or adding in like of shit so that i suppose it thrives and it continues to produce foods that are optimal for mine and your health going forward other magnesium foods that I definitely do recommend would be pumpkin seeds. They also contain zinc. Zinc is good for your immune system. We're coming into the winter months. It is key that you start adding in the Z-I-N-C. And for those of you that don't know, zinc is something that when men ejaculate, actually lose a certain amount of it. So always make sure you're pumping up with your zinc-filled foods that are pumpkin seeds. And also you gain the advantage of definitely uh, better bang for your buck with the magnesium. So those are the two that I really stress that people add in, dark leafy greens and pumpkin seeds for magnesium. And the third one, <clears throat> uh, it was the, like, the peas or beans and a classic fourth. You can go towards your cacao powder. Cacao powder is 15 grams, that's a big spoon, put into yogurt, sprinkled with, we go with pumpkin seeds, is going to get you an abundance. So that's 15 grams a big spoon and you go 15 grams of pumpkin seeds would definitely get you 40 and then will get you closer to 60 percent of your overall daily recommended amount of magnesium okay so that's great in a snack and if you had a high protein yogurt and sprinkled it with some fruit in season fruits right now berries literally you can go and pick them at this moment in time in abundance at the side of the country roads and you can really freeze the abundance of them. food is there to be to be picked, to be eaten, 
And when you do that, you are most certainly going to get unbelievable benefits. Your fiber, you have antioxidants in the berries. You, if you're controlling your blood sugar levels with a sprinkle of cinnamon and it's a high protein yogurt, bish bash bosh, you are ticking all the boxes for, I suppose, healthy snacks, healthy foods, and most certainly getting those things organic. Why? Because they can cause, I suppose, definitely uh, non organic dairy is something that can uh, most certainly have negative effects on your gut health. So I do recommend organic for those people that do tolerate the dairy and especially if it's soya definitely because soya beans can use genetically modified seeds for those people that are vegetarians on this and i do uh, switch from one to the other i don't have a preference towards diets i really want you to eat foods that suit you <clears throat> excuse me i'll take a drink you know how difficult it actually is to constantly talk for half an hour 40 minutes without taking a drink of water and today's beverage i'm going to tell you about this <coughs> <clears throat> is comfrey so literally comfrey is pretty much a super uh, food for ourselves but partially tea is something i do regularly drink as well for improving the likes of cognitive function this podcast is recorded early in the morning after those watching on youtube that's why the background is completely black pitch black um so yeah comfrey is there's so many different micronutrients again micronutrients are the things the body runs off after macronutrients so macronutrients are your proteins fats and carbs the micronutrients are the vitamin c the iron the magnesium all those other we call it minuscule but also the micronutrients help the body to thrive again and most certainly we're going on to the likes of your uh, second question comes in from blake on facebook uh, foods on a night shift that you recommend okay and then any tips for meal prepping? So with the likes of night shifts, it is definitely something that is important to remember. The processed foods are never a good idea. Okay, Because when we think of night shift, we're with a group of people and what ends up happening is your sleep is uh, affected because you have, don't have a pattern. And as a result of that, you tend to go for the things that are really easy. And what's easy? <clears throat> ringing somebody to deliver the likes of whatever processed foods, chips, pizzas, takeaways, Chinese's that can literally get dropped to the door wherever you're working. And that's not what you want. Whether it's a 12 hour shift on the guards, the nurses, doctors, <clears throat> healthcare professionals, or just in a factory, the point of which is you need to take out processed foods out of your diet. And we are actually not designed to stay up throughout the dark hours of the day so that's straight up it's not something that's actually going to give you optimal health from currently doing that job if you do it for a period of time it isn't going to cause you massive i suppose distress <clears throat> but what it is going to do is not be optimal so if you could most certainly switch to the days that is a hell of a lot better and we'll touch on what foods i do recommend a meal prepping whether it's a 12 hour day shift or it's a 12 hour night shift if body most certainly must consume foods and go always going for a high protein. So think of an example like meals, <clears throat> split it up like the day and depending on if you're on four days on, four days off, it's you having to be making your nights, your days. So you have to have your breakfast, you have to have a lunch and you have to have a dinner. But really and truly, you need to get them from the best type of food source you possibly can. Protein sources, chicken, fish, turkey, eggs. Don't be going for the chicken fillet roll. Don't be going for the protein bars because it's quick because it's handy. <clears throat> you have to, I feel like I'm so uh, have to most certainly get whole foods into your diet. Complex carbohydrates, that's your oats. <clears throat> you can steep them overnight, aid in digestion. Apologies, one second. <coughs> and when you do that you're going to gain the advantage of again a slow release of your energy it's not going to cause an insulin spike and if you are and will certainly having cravings it's definitely worth bumping up your cacao cacao is something you can drink as a warm beverage as an alternative to coffee because coffee is going to completely uh, mess up the likes of your body especially if you're switching from nights to days to days to nights so i would have that major a benefit of switching from a coffee and even this is another little tip for people warm beverages are nice i even like them okay i simply don't drink coffee because if i drink coffee i think i literally would be climbing the walls um 
So <laughs> I do recommend cacao powder and maca powder. Those are two uh, things that don't have negative effects on your nervous system and the uh, and your adrenals. So two things you can literally do, and I'll tell you how to make this. Spoon, 15 grams, big spoon, big spoon, breakfast spoon, whatever it is, one spoon, if you're weighing it, 15 grams, 15 grams of maca powder. Cold water, mix in, round and round with your cup, following that, add in your hot water, mix and mix and mix. It's kind of like making gravy, which I used to make on a Sunday when I was back home uh, for the Sunday roast. So yeah, that's it. It's a lovely warm beverage. <clears throat> so many different benefits to the likes of those uh, cacao and maca being something that's an adaptogenic, which means it helps the body with stress, which also would definitely be well worth having on the likes of your night shifts. I get mine from New and Natural. They're a Galway-based company, but you can get them from anywhere. And to have a discount code, I think it was Coleman15 was a discount code. So that's C-O-L-M-A-N-15 is a discount code if you're currently going with that. But either you can get them in large stores and or it doesn't have to be that brand. The point of which is you're adding in those foods, liquids to your diet. Take out fizzy drinks, adding in maybe kombucha if you do like that fizz. And that is it's about adding in more of these healthy food choices as opposed to taking things out. And spacing your meals out accordingly. So what you want to do, what you don't want to do is say, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. And then what ends up happening is you tend to binge eat and we typically will go to the vending machine. We'll go and uh, get to pass the shop on the way home or it's someone that brought in, they had biscuits, they had chocolates, they had cakes. Those things are handy. So you have to have your meals lined up. Overnight oats is the classic one. <clears throat> then meal prepping last night's dinner. In fact, it was the day's dinner. It's your nighttime shift main meal is something that I do recommend people. And throughout the day, whether it's throughout your, 24, throughout your awakening hours, adding in a type of salad. But I don't just mean greens. I mean literally adding in a protein source. So let's take the example of someone that I'm currently training right now. They get a full chicken. They roast the whole thing and they take it out. That's on the Sunday. You have five meals there just for yourself. If you more involved in your family or you're in a relationship, put on the two chickens if that's what needs to be if you don't have enough of them. So inevitably, then you're taking off the two wings that's going into lunch boxes. You're having two breasts and you have the bits that are left in around and when you're getting another from an organic source you can use and I do recommend this as well is making the likes of bone broth. Bone broth good for your immune system coming into these winter months and how is it good for your immune system? Because it lines your stomach and why 70 percent of your immune system is located in your gut all these things key whether we're in the night shift whether on the day shift whether you're uh, not currently working at all or whatever other job that you have these things are going to benefit you spacing out your meals eating whole foods bumping up your protein bumping up your magnesium all these things reduce cravings whatever current situation you're in to help you to most certainly adapt to the best version of yourself so that's definitely something that I do recommend to people. But stressing that point, we're not actually adapted, the body, to go and work 12-hour shifts throughout that dark period of the day. We're designed to get up with light and go to bed when it's dark. And that's one of those things that we're coming further and further away from optimal health. And we're wondering why we're getting sicker and sicker. We're tired and tired. We're losing our hair. We're stressed off our head and what we need to do is the simple things you need to find a lifestyle where you're eating whole foods you need to find a job where you're able to be your best earning a certain amount of money in a week in a month in a year so that you can provide for your partner for your family and that you can live a healthy life okay food is medicine but lifestyle is key and lifestyle comes into the job that you currently are carrying out at this moment in time so People say that it is difficult. Yes, it's difficult. But we have to remember that your health is your wealth, really and truly. You will pay any money. Just think of the example when we get into our 50s, you get into your 60s. You will pay any money for you to be healthy, to have, I suppose, mobility, to have more energy, to look your best. And most certainly, that is an attribute that people have when they have their lifestyle looked after in their younger years. And that comes from most certainly food followed by a routine that they can follow, that they can be consistent with. So that's a really important point. And next one we're going on to is 
uh, from one of my clients. I'm currently training on the organic fitness program at this moment in time and I'm currently taking on a couple of individuals if you want to go in. Um, I think this month is completely booked out, but if you want to send me a message and book in ahead of time, I would love to have you on the organic fitness program. And that would be most certainly tailoring your foods to your activity levels, getting you to have, I suppose, things such as your workouts in alignment with your, I suppose, fitness level so that you can, I suppose, reduce body fat, you can lose weight and in a healthy way. No mad supplements, no crazy stuff, real foods, real results. So yeah, you can fit in the contact details on the likes of the website and or I do nutritional calls just to sort of set people up if they want to have a one-to-one chat with me or not. Yeah, those things are on my tree link that people can get on my Instagram page, my TikTok page, and just also send me a message privately. I reply to all of them. People, someone asked me the other day, go and do all your social media. It looks great. I was like, how do you do it? How do you manage that? I get up early and I also go to bed early. So that's really that in a nutshell. So getting back to, is nuts a good protein source? So straight off the bat, nuts are not a good protein source. They do contain protein, but they're much higher healthy fats. And that's one of those things with marketing. You have on your peanut butter jars, in a glass or a plastic container. You must realize that they have higher healthy fats. So just like you take the example of, I'm such a visual person. So it's like a bar chart. You have small, the big lad, and then the medium. For us to look at that, pro- protein, fats, and carbohydrates in the likes of your nuts, whether it's peanuts, and muga, yeah, nuts. See, and nuts can vary. Nuts can vary. So we'll just touch on, take the example of peanut butter, because it's often uh, <clears throat> advertised as containing protein. It does contain protein, but the healthy fats are much higher in it. So if you're looking to hit your protein sources, you would be much better off going with more whole foods, whether it's eggs, my classic go-to every single day that begins with a Y. Why? Because they're nature's multivitamin. They contain so many different antioxidants. I love that. The lutein and zeaxanthin improves cognitive function. That's a classic. So going towards yourself and getting the best type of eggs you possibly can, getting chicken organically, and most certainly in on top of that, you are going with the likes of any meats, any fishes, and you go with tofu, you go with tempeh. And again, those are all the ones that contain all nine essential amino acids. There are bulgur wheat in there too. I don't mention that straight away. Or And or you have quinoa. They have carbohydrates that are quite high too. But going for those fibers I listed, chicken, fish, turkey, eggs, tofu, and tempeh are your classics that are going to be higher in protein and give you better bang for your buck than going for nuts. The advantages of nuts are they do contain fiber. Yes, they do. They do and most certainly contain magnesium as well that would also help reduce cravings. But if you are looking to hit your protein target and definitely if you're looking to lose weight, it wouldn't be an idea, the best idea, to add in a load of peanut butter to try to hit your protein targets. So that's important. One of the things that I do like and about it is it does... It is a protein source, but it's not a complete protein source. But if you are having it, having it with the likes of sourdough bread. I love this at the weekend, getting sourdough bread. Whether it's at the country market or I had a podcast there previously. Uh, someone's actually in West Cork actually doing courses on making and baking your own sourdough bread. And how good that is for your beneficial gut bacteria because white gut is massively linked with all things health. So getting back to that point, nuts, I'm such a visual guy, and bread also contains protein. Yeah, it certainly does. But it's not complete protein. When you put them together, it contains all nine essential amino acids. So that's how vegetarians and definitely vegans are able to hit their protein requirements on a regular basis. They don't necessarily have to have the likes of uh, bread and pe- peanuts to make complete protein. Typically, lentils is a really high protein source, but doesn't contain all nine essential amino acids. So you can combine that with chickpeas, beans, and that will still get you all your nine essential amino acids. That's something that I have in the book that is an Amazon number one bestseller. We will be talking about this till the cows come home. That is for sure. You can chalk that down. I love it. And if you haven't, uh, most certainly got your hands on it. It's available on Amazon and I would love you to get it. I'll be giving those out at the likes of the retreats and that are on. The next one is on in West Cork and Skull. If you would like to book in for the last one of 2023. Yeah, 2023. 2022. 
my God, I just missed a year of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that was quick. I'm glad you corrected me on that. Fair play to you. It was like seismic waves we got there in the end. 2022 for the next couple of months. So yeah, that's the likes of nuts and seeds. But there is one, I suppose, seed that is a complete protein. Those are hemp seeds. But again, they do have high healthy fats, but they do contain all nine essential amino acids. So if I am having, let's say, a plant-based meal, and we'll take the example of, let's say, it's tempeh or it's tofu, I am always bumping it up with either pumpkin seeds, Italian protein, still has high healthy fats, but I definitely go with hemp seeds that have all nine essential amino acids. That's going to help you hit your protein targets. That's going to keep you fuller for longer. That's going to reduce cravings. That is a perfect meal that you can use on a night shift. I love how these are all linked. That's great. And how do you meal prep that? Okay, we'll take the example of tofu. You can get it in little or alleys or any of your health food shops around the place. Those are the best places to get your organic, local foods. Health food shops, country markets, after that for the veg, but for the most part, we go with tofu. Because why? I add it into my diet. And people are wondering how to cook it. I literally put the whole thing in a pan, mash it up, make it scrambled, add in veg stock, boujon, boulon. It is the game changer. If you haven't seen it, check out my Instagram page. It's literally the business. It's literally salt. But yet, when you take out processed foods, you have to have salt in your diet. Why? Because it's natural electrolytes. Boom. And as a result of that, add in some turmeric. Add in some black pepper. That's your protein source. Add in any greens to that. Kale, spinach, rocket, arugula. Anything you can get your hands on. Rainbow chard. Boom. It's also high in magnesium. And we go with then any other veg that you like to taste of. You like carrots? Boom. Put those in. You actually gain the advantage of if you want to grate a carrot in and some apple cider vinegar that will also control your blood sugar levels that will help you prevent you of cravings, which is important then for night shift. And you can literally put that in a glass jar, seal it up, bring it to work. And if you wanted, if you had the advantage of, if you don't mind eating the cold or if you had the advantage of heating it up in work, that would be great because those are literally things that are high protein. Your hemp seeds are gone in there too. They can be made in less than eight minutes. Okay? Less than eight minutes, you're heating, you're cooking, you're chopping, any of these things. You can make up Five of those and put them into the fridge. Yep, they will be done and dusted, ready for you to take out. And that's a real handy one for anyone trying to improve, I suppose, their health. Meal plan, planning things ahead of time is key. And that is, I suppose, a classic way to go on to the last thing for uh, today's Q&A. We have uh, the final question in from Emma, uh, as well as, okay, Mitch. I hope we don't have... Um, I butcher that name. So M-I-C-H-I-C-H. -I -I -C -H, and then is milk good or bad? And do I drink milk? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, my previous <clears throat> diet history. So I used to be lactose intolerant. That means I used to have as most, most certainly eczema and an abundance on the backs of my arms, so just below my uh, bicep, on the backs of my legs. And I used to scratch it till it bled for the fact that I had an autoimmune disease. It was more so down to the likes of the <clears throat> food that I was eating as a child and growing up were heavily sprayed. And I went from breast milk over to soya. And soya, again, is one of those foods that if you are a vegetarian or eating soya on a regular basis, I would really, really, truly love for you to switch over to uh, non-GMO grain and organic sources of soya because it's one of those things that can be heavily sprayed through its life cycle, its growing cycle. So that's something that I used to suffer with. And I used to be able to have yogurts. I used to have a lot of sinus issues. issues. And in on top of that, right now, I'm able to incorporate dairy into my diet. I have organic Danish yogurts on a regular basis as my kind of dessert that I really enjoy with cinnamon, with fruit, and sometimes a bit of protein supplement into it too. And I love that after my main meal in the evening. It's great. And I enjoy it and I continue to do it. Why? Because I really like it. I love it. It's like my dessert. It's an alternative to ice cream and the likes of fruit, fruit ice cream, which I used to have. I used to have raspberry ripple wafers on a Sunday. And maybe then if we're really good through um <laughs> throughout the day, my mother or a gas woman uh, used to give us ice cream. Yep, that was it. That kept me quiet for a small period of time. But it was not sorry me and I wasn't able to digest that digest it that well. But I've improved my gut lining massively and my skin is now improved why because you, uh, and 
you heal yourself from the inside out and your skin is the largest organ in your body. If you want better looking skin, I definitely recommend to improve your food choices on a regular basis. So uh, milk is neither good or bad. It's most certainly context dependent. Where On what milk are you drinking? Are you drinking UHTC milk, which is the, the carton you get in the airport or in your hotels? That isn't something I recommend. Is it milk that is pasteurized and homogenized, heated, and taking away the beneficial bacteria that is found in milk. If if it is, it's not something that is your best bang for your buck. You're better off again if you're able to tolerate the lactose, because I previously wasn't, and you're going towards the best type of milk for people that I currently consume is uh, raw milk. So raw milk is something that can be consumed, and I'm going to be visiting a farm very soon, um, I'm sure I'll have a podcast out for uh, in the near future talking about the benefits of raw milk in itself. It is something that is a probiotic. Probiotics naturally improve your gut health. When you improve your gut health, you most certainly improve all areas of your health. I have a section of the book on this. I have separate posts, podcasts. I get asked on a regular basis. When you improve the likes of your gut lining, which can become permeable, which means it can have holes in it. Just think of it like a pipe can have holes in it because of excess stress in your body, either from day-to-day -day work and or harsh chemicals that are sprayed on the foods or given to the animals that you are consuming or their products such as eggs. So when you realize that, it's better for you to heal your gut before you most certainly go down the route of consuming milk, especially if you're lactose intolerant <clears throat> and you're, uh, it's causing you inflammation. So it's dependent on your current situation with your health and your fitness at this moment in time today. <clears throat> so <clears throat> how to heal your gut? Adding in more anti-inflammatory foods. Anti-inflammatory foods, I do recommend are turmeric, ginger, definitely, spices. And spices can be cinnamon, could be cayenne pepper. And after that, you can have cloves. These are great things that have that are high in antioxidants and anti-inflammatory foods. You can have your anti-inflammatory warm beverage here. I'll take a sip of this. So that is your comfrey, your parsley, your coriander, cilantro, some of the green is stuck on my tooth. And anything that's green is anti-inflammatory. Fruits are also anti-inflammatory. Okay. So when you realize that all plants are anti-inflammatory, it's important in spices and herbs, add more of those in. The turmeric, make sure you have the black pepper. I have to keep saying that. It activates that anti-inflammatory property. Or things that improve your gut lining are healthy fats. What healthy fats do I recommend? Definitely, if you have the advantage of bone broth, I would go with that. I have a video on YouTube, how to make it. It's quick, it's simple. It's something you can do on a Sunday. And when you do it, it is something that contains healthy fats that improve your gut lining, okay? So preventing the likes of those leakages in, fight. because really and truly, when we talk about leakages, what is that? That is that food is being allowed to get into your bloodstream, causing inflammation in your body. Inflammation causes stress. Stress is then, um, stress and inflammation is the root cause of all diseases, whether it be an autoimmune disease or more chronic, serious ones later on in life. So those are things that I do recommend for people to add in. Other healthy fats that are great are extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil. Those are things that I cook with on a regular basis. Butter is another one as well. And again, definitely getting grass fed and organic source of butter is massively important because of, again, if the butter comes from cows or and butter comes from cows that are fed a high uh, percentage of regular hormones, that is negatively going to affect our health. And for women in particular, really important that one to get things uh, without having added hormones uh, in your bodies because you are completely different uh, to the way men are designed. And that's supposed just genetically and the way of life. Uh, women have to bear children, but men do not. Those are just supposed the basics of it. But yes, those are things that I do recommend for people to uh, try and work on. Work on improving your gut health to allows you to have the best food you possibly can. And you would also find people say, cool, man, I found a study to say that milk is just designed for the likes of people 
or sorry, for animals who are trying to uh, put on weight. And you will be right in saying that. But remember the fact that you can find a study to say anything. You can find a study to say there's no difference between organic and conventional. And it's really and truly finding foods that you like, that you enjoy, and that are most certainly sustainable for the future. Animals such as cattle, their farm manure has to be used in and is used in regenerative agriculture, which is chemical free or fully registered organic. That is the future. Synthetic fertilizers to give nutrients to the soil made from petroleum, made from oil, is standard in large commercial growing. So that's why I have a huge preference towards people realizing that when you go ahead and get, I suppose, foods that are grown in whichever agriculture, you're not only, I suppose, improving your health, but you're also supporting someone who's looking after the soil. We're only here for a short period of time and realize that the better food that you choose when you get them local, when you're getting them fresh, you're not only supporting your health, but you're also supporting the local grower, you're also supporting the local community, and you're literally supporting the soil. The soil is the health of everything and everything. And more than that, yeah, that is pretty much those, I suppose, four main questions asked from the likes of Sarah on TikTok about the magnesium, how to reduce your cravings. We went through the likes of high protein, high magnesium, the foods to get it. You can actually hit your daily recommended amount, which is 300 milligrams. I just know that number off the top of my head because I'm a numbers guy. Um, I'm like, uh, a lot of numbers and words in my head, being that dyslexic. And I actually did that webinar for Dyslexia Ireland there very recently. That was kind of cool. So, yeah, if you haven't checked that out, I'll try to get that up on YouTube very soon. Actually, no, if I get it on YouTube, I should be able to get the audio and put it on to uh, all our platforms. So stay tuned for that. The cool, um, it was a cool experience for me personally. Um, struggled a lot in school, but that doesn't stop you. It didn't stop me, that's for sure. So, yeah, we got Sarah from TikTok. We got Blake on Facebook. Foods for the night shift, getting into a regular routine. Space out your meals. Again, processed foods, not what you're looking for. So space out your breakfast, space out your lunch, Saturday type lunch and your dinner, and just make it, I suppose, as close to as you possibly can as your normal day would be. But remember, that we're not actually designed for night shifts and you're better off, I suppose, getting onto uh, a job and a lifestyle that suits your health goals long-term. Then we went on to, like says, nuts, a good protein source. And most certainly they are not your best bang for your buck protein sources. You'd be better off going with either chicken, fish, turkey, eggs, tofu, tempeh, and those hemp seeds, as we said, contain all nine essential amino acids. Much before you go towards the likes of your nuts and there are nuts that are higher in protein. So hemp seeds will be quite high. Pumpkin seeds will be quite high. But then you go pecans and you go walnuts. They aren't as high, but they also have other benefits such as the walnuts are good for your brain and are really key for your uh, brain because they're high in healthy fats and omega-3 healthy fats. I'm definitely having walnuts now this morning. And I love talking about foods because then it gets me to cover in things that I wouldn't have necessarily, I don't have them every day, walnuts. <clears throat> I uh, add things in when I think of them and have chats with people, clients or recording these podcasts. So yeah. Uh, then we have Mitchell and Emma's question on is milk good or bad? Following that, uh, do I drink milk? I certainly do. And it's not necessarily every day. And it is a natural probiotic, which is so good for improving your naturally improving the likes of your gut health. Adding in more of these whole foods to your diet is key for your overall health. But another other examples of probiotics. So probiotics are those foods that are uh, do contain beneficial microorganisms. So I would lean towards kombuchas. I would lean towards sourdough bread. I would lean towards either kimchi, which is really fermented, uh, so, sorry, it's sauerkraut with the likes of spices. And also, again, I have all these videos up on YouTube, but I'm definitely making a fresh one because mm, it's going to be red cabbage ready for harvesting. Oh, yeah. Yes, I love red cabbage because it has higher antioxidants than the green stuff. Yeah, I mean, the darker the color, the higher the antioxidants. That is cool because... You want to be healthy? That's cool. Yeah. So straight up, uh, thanks so much for listening to this week's podcast. And I'd always love by ending these shows by saying, stay tuned, stay classy, and keep it organic.